What's up guys, it's Trevor with Embers. Today we're gonna to talk about a big debate, hot debate. No, it's not that big. I mean, it's hot, but it's not that big of a debate. But if you're in the market for a wood stove, you're gonna ask yourself this question. Do you buy a stove with a secondary reburn system using one of these? Or do you buy a stove with a catalytic combustor using one of these? What the heck's the difference? Which one's better? We actually do a science experiment where we put this to the test under real fire. Let's go. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna do a science experiment where we actually put one of these to the test in action to show you how it works under real flame. Um, but first let's talk the two different technologies. We're gonna talk efficiencies and how to use both stoves because you operate them differently. So let's start with this one. This is what you probably are gonna see the most of, and that's a secondary reburn system. We'll show you some pictures, but essentially there'll be four or five of these sitting in the top of the firebox, like the stove box like this. And then there'll be like fire retardant insulation on the top. Now what happens is, is normally in a regular like open fireplace, like a big fireplace, your fire is gonna just basically exit right out the chimney. And you know, 80, 90% of your smoke or soot, you know, like an open bonfire is basically just gonna go right out the stack. That's what makes them so inefficient. That's what makes them bad for the environment. So what these do is these are secondary oxygen tubes. So these little holes here are pumping oxygen down and then the fire blankets on the top. And so the fire cannot forcibly exit. And what it's doing is it's hitting these tubes getting more fuel, more oxygen, and reburning your smoke and soot, and then finally exiting your chimney stack. So that's what makes them efficient, is it can reburn that smoke and soot several times over before it finally exits, and that's what makes it super efficient. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward technology. Um, now, how does a catalytic combustor work? Now, a catalytic combustor works differently because this guy is essentially reburning your smoke and soot, this device itself. And it's not necessarily pumping more oxygen into it like this. Now, scientifically, there's a reason how and why these reburn and create extra burn time. And we're gonna show you that in our experiment. It's over my head, the science behind it, but essentially this is creating your reburn system. Now they work and operate differently, how? If you're using one of these stoves, it's important to know how, how to use them properly because you will use them differently. Okay, so the way the secondary reburn system works, here's an example we're showing you. So see, we have our reburn tubes and then our, these aren't set in here, right? But our insulation blankets. So because oxygen is just naturally dumping in here, once we start our fire, it just naturally starts doing its thing. Um, and so there's really no operation you have outside of starting a fire. And then we'd have our air control uh, for in and out uh, for how much air control is going into our firebox. But our air controls for our firebox itself, it doesn't relate to this. So when you're operating it, there's really nothing you have to do with your reburn system. You just kind of set it and forget it. A catalytic combustor works differently, and here's why. Okay, so how do these work? Well, because we're not just dumping oxygen in the firebox with this, these metals that are in here actually have to activate. So this doesn't start the reburn process until this guy reaches 500 degrees. It doesn't start working or it's not activated until 500 degrees. So what that means is you are basically running your wood stove without activating this or without, you, all of them have a lever, which we'll show you. And so we're basically just burning just a natural firebox while we let this heat up. Once our stove hits 500 degrees, you'll see this, this would be sitting down in, down in here like this. And then we're gonna hit our bypass damper, which watch this cast iron damper close. So once we activate our damper, that means that it's forcing the 100% of the fire to bypass into this. It has to prop, go through a catalytic combustor before it can exit and then the combustor is actually doing the process of the reburning cycle. Um, so it does require more babysitting in the sense that, here's an example of one, a lot of catalytic combustor stoves are going to have 
a little thermometer here. And so you see our thermometer is gonna show inactive. Once we get to temp, our little red needle is gonna be catalyst active. So once our catalyst is active, then we usually flip the bypass, which all catalytic stoves have a bypass somewhere. And then at that point, we're done. But you have to sort of maintain your air control because you don't want the stove getting too hot. That's gonna to apply to both stoves. So that's how you operate them. So they do operate differently. Again, a reburn system, we're really not doing much at all. We're just kind of letting our, maintaining our oxygen in the firebox itself. With a catalytic combustor, we have to wait for the stove to come up to temperature. Then once we're at temp, we activate our combustor and then our combustor takes over from there. Now the question is, is which one is better? Okay, now let's talk maintenance between the two. Reburn systems throughout the years have gained a lot of momentum because they require less maintenance in the sense that there's really nothing you have to do except make sure these oxygen ports aren't getting plugged. Um, and that's gonna come from, if these were to get plugged, that's user error anyways. It's because you're burning glossy newspapers, uh, wet wood, sappy wood, you're not burning good hardwoods, you're gonna gunk up your firebox no matter what stove it is. Um, so really all you have to do is maintain these oxygen ports, which it gets so hot it really does that on its own. So they're essentially maintenance free for the most part. Catalytic combustors though have definitely gotten a bad rap. And the reason is, is because these ports are what activate everything and there's precious metals on these. And uh, if this gets gunked up, what a lot of homeowners do is they'll wire brush these and clean these out themselves. Well, guess what they just did? They just scraped off all the precious metals, which are the, the, the thing that makes this thing go, essentially rendering it inactive. And they'll be like, I'm not getting good bird times. Yeah, that's because you ruined it. <laughs> um, so it's not, these, it's not that these are high maintenance, it's just these are easier for homeowners to screw them up. And we actually have an example of that. Mr. Know-it-all showed up again and tried to school me on catalytic combustors, but I had to set him straight. Hey, Travis, good to see you. Hey, yeah, yeah, it's good to see you again. Trevor, good Tra to see you. Travis Tra is fine. Tra Travis, it's yep. good to see you again. Good yeah. to see you. What, what I owe the pleasure of this you. time. Yeah, it's good to see you. So um, I got another property I want to put a wood stove in. You have a lot of properties. A ton of them. Okay. This is not my last visit, I promise you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, need another, I need another product. I need a wood stove. Wood but stove. But I want a long burn time. Longest burn time. Long burn time. Longest burn time possible. Long as possible. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna put you in a catalytic wood stove then. Nope, 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 no, no. Why, why? No, Trevor, don't do this to me again. I don't want a catalytic. I've had it before. I cleaned it, never worked right again. I want something non-catalytic. How did you clean it? Real deep, really deep. With a wire brush? The hardest bristle I could find. And I really scrubbed it clean. Mr. Know-it-all. What, 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 what do you mean, what, what's wrong These with that? These are filled with precious metals. Yeah, like I had to silver. get that out. You scraped off all the silver and all the precious metals that are in there, rendering ineffective, basically ruining it. This is, what? You didn't know you did that? No. Oh, <laughs> uh, so you need a catalytic combustor. You just need to know how to clean it. In fact, I recommend hiring a professional. How would you recommend I clean it? Hire a professional. That's what you're gonna to wanna to do. I consider myself a professional. I know, I've seen I'm you. I'm very your, good at cleaning. You've been in here many times telling me this. You're gonna to wanna to hire a professional because you basically ruined the catalytic combustor by scraping off all the precious metals. So I think a catalytic combustor is gonna be what you want, but you just gotta know how to maintain it and use it properly, which I can, I'm glad to show you. Please teach me. Okay, so you're, you're open to a catalytic, right? Possibly, if you okay. can teach me the good stuff. All right, let me show you. So you can see, it's not that these are higher maintenance, it's just a user error. Uh, same thing, if you're burning glossy newspapers and, and uh, sappy wood, you're, you're burning pallet wood, you know, just junk in there and you're treating it like a bonfire, you're gonna ruin this thing. And a lot of people self-clean these, which I don't recommend either. And you really shouldn't be self-cleaning unless you're, you know what you're doing anyways. And you should have your, your chimney swept annually before the season starts anyhow. So if you hire a professional, get your, your chimney swept, have them professionally clean this, and then you don't have to worry about it. And then this is gonna work perfectly fine and should last you for a long, long time. 
and then, but you can always get a replacement for it. What happens is, and the reason these get such a bad rap, is they, people gunk them up, they ruin them, and then they just take them out of the stove. Well, now of course you're getting terrible burn times and people think catalytic stoves don't burn well. So that's my little rant there. But um, it's not that these are less or more maintenance, it's just it's easier for homeowners to screw it up. And that's the problem that a lot of people have experimenting with these. And then there's also some really cool new stoves that are sort of, this is really cool, they're sort of incorporating both technologies into one. So they're called hybrids. So they're sort of using a reburn system combined with a catalytic bypass, which is really cool and produces some really, really high efficiencies. All right, now let's talk efficiencies. Which one is more efficient? Which one's gonna give you better burns? Let's go to my office, check out some charts. I got a cool new little TV we're gonna play with. Show you some visuals on which one's more efficient. All right, so I saw this experiment on Blaze King's website. Didn't really care for the presentation, so we're gonna try it. Uh, we have a little makeshift set up here. These are my handy little stands, but we probably don't want the sparkling water in them. So it's probably time to stone cold these, isn't it? All right, these are nice and empty. So these are our stands for our catalytic combustor. Let's activate this combustor. Okay, so essentially the way this experiment is supposed to work, and this is why in your wood stove, once your catalytic combustor is activated or once it's above 500 degrees, it's gonna start the reburn process. So we're gonna heat this up, then we're gonna shut the flame off but then turn the propane back on and then see if we can still reburn soot and smoke. Okay, so now we've killed our flame. We still got heat coming out of this. Okay, turn it back on. And now we got propane. Oh yeah, son of a gun. Feel that. What does OL mean? It's over, it's too hot. I don't have it perfectly centered and the wind's messing with it a bit, but do you see how much less, look at smoke? Helps a lot. It drastically reduces your smoke and soot. Okay, that's our experiment. I was curious myself if this was gonna work with my makeshift pop cans, but it is, man, this thing is pumping heat. So I don't understand the science behind how this is doing its thing. <laughs> I'm sure some of you scientists are gonna tell me, why don't you go ahead and, and tell us scientifically how it's working. But the point is, is it's reburning fuel without a flame. So this, you can see how this in a wood stove is gonna create efficiency because it gets rid of that smoke and soot and reburns it. And we don't even have a flame and this thing is pumping heat. So we can see how that's gonna extend your burn times in a wood stove, even without a flame. All it needs is really a fuel source. Experiment's a success. Okay, so here's just kind of a small little sample size example of a chart. Now I'm gonna kind of break this down on what it means. So this is a chart from Regency. They're using their hybrid technology versus a non-catalytic uh, wood burning stove. So this would be even bigger difference, but I couldn't find a good chart between a full catalytic and a non-catalytic. So this red line is gonna be our non-catalytic stove. So you can see right out the gate, man, I'm tall. This TV, who mounted this TV this tall? I did, whoops. So right out the gate, pew, all that oxygen, that stove gets the temp and it gets hot really, really fast with the reburn. But you can see what starts to happen is our red line, which is our reburn system, rapidly decreases and it does level out above 300 degrees. See, we're still at the five hour mark right here. And so we reach 300 degrees at 10 hours, which is really, really good. We're kind of splitting hairs here because like I always say, everything is so efficient. So we're at 300 degrees 10 hours later, are you kidding me? That's awesome. But in comparison to a catalytic, look at this. So we're not as hot out the gate, but once our catalytic really kicks in, we actually get hotter. So we're above 700 degrees at two and a half hours in, we're above 700. And you can see 
we steadily stay hotter than a non-catalytic stove as time goes on. They even out here, but here's the real difference. As you can see, we're getting an extra, this is a, let's see, the nine hour mark. This is the 12 hour mark. So we're gaining another three hours of staying above 300 degrees. That's substantial. So that's what's gonna really elongate your burn times is having a catalytic combustor in here. Now these secondary lines, this is telling us how much fuel we've used. So as far as our firebox is concerned, we're burning up a lot more fuel. We have a lot less fuel with a non-catalytic, which makes sense because we're getting, we're getting so much hotter out the gate. So we're burning a lot of fuel on the front side of our burn. And then we're slowly, you can see it does even out and get closer, but we have less fuel to burn in our firebox, which is also what lends itself to a shorter burn time versus the fuel in our catalytic firebox, we're conserving fuel. So what I'm getting at here is a catalytic firebox when cleaned and used properly is much more efficient. It's gonna give us much more extended burn times. And if you're interested in the elongating your burn times as much as possible and having the longest, most efficient burn possible, you're gonna want a catalytic stove. It's just a more efficient burn. But like we said, it does require a little more babysitting on the initial startup, and you have to make sure you're getting that thing professionally serviced compared to a non-catalytic stove. That being said, like we said, a non-catalytic stove is no pushover. I mean, 10 hour burn, that's gonna do for 99% of people. <laughs> that's gonna fill their needs. No one needs a 10 hour burn hardly. You figure the longest burn you're gonna need is from the time you go to bed, from the time you wake up. When you wake up, you're gonna have a hot firebox with either technology. So in most cases, most tech, either technology is gonna suit the homeowner just fine. However, if you're really into efficiencies, check out a catalytic, because it's pretty sweet. Or if you're away from home for long periods of time, that's kind of the way to go. So which one's better? Only you can answer that, and it depends on what your individual needs are. Obviously, if you're away from your firebox for longer periods of time, you're away from home, the catalytic is going to suit you well, or if you just like more heat for longer periods of time without having to refill your firebox, catalytic is going to be the way to go. It's definitely more efficient, but it does require a little more babysitting, a little more uh, care uh, than a non-catalytic stove. But as you can see, both are exceptional. I mean, there really isn't a wrong way to go. A non-catalytic stove is giving you a 10 hour burn time. That's pretty awesome. That's, I mean, I don't sleep 10 hours. Do you, Chris? Now, so the longest you'd probably need is from the time you go to bed, from the time you wake up. That's usually at most eight hours. So you're gonna have a hot firebox either way when you wake up in the morning, which is super cool. And you can see from our experiment, those catalytic combustors are pretty stinking awesome how they're uh, sort of conducting heat and producing heat. As long as they have fuel, they can make heat without a flame, which is pretty awesome. And you'll see that a lot of times in those catalytic wood stoves that thing's gonna be emitting heat and you're really just gonna have an ash bed with no flame. It's pretty awesome to see live. So that's the difference between catalytic and non-catalytic. Hopefully that helps you guys out here in the Denver metro area. Come to our showroom today. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos.